Hello, I'm Kainton, the Tech Pro, the Computer Engineer. Today, we are going to be talking about program source code verification. And this is a, uh, a lesson for you. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment box. If you have any assignments, any homework you want me to help, leave it in the uh, comment box there and be sure that immediately, maybe in one or two days, I'll respond to you with the answer. If there is any part of this course you, that is difficult for you to understand, please let me know in the comment box. And of course, any topic at all you want me to treat, just leave it there and I'll respond immediately. Remember to subscribe so that you will get updates when I post new videos. So let's get started with program source code verification. In this lesson, we are going to discuss uh, what is code verification. And then we discuss criteria for code verification. There are four of them. Coding standards, software mer metrics, fault patterns, runtime failures. These are the four we are going to look at. And then we are going to look at three techniques for code validation. Manual review, static analysis, and dynamic analysis. So what is program source code ver verification? Program source code verification is part of software verification and validation that verifies the source code by checking for the models and the related components to ensure that they conform to coding guidelines and also to detect and correct error in the source code. So if you've written a source code, how are you sure that this source code is valid? How are you sure that there are no errors? What if there are no errors but you did not conform to best practices in coding. So all these are checked during the process of code validation. Now what is coding guidelines? Coding guidelines is also the same as coding uh, best practices and these are a set of rules that the code is expected to perform to. Of, uh, uh, for instance you have code may be written without being indented. Another code may be written with indentation. What of syntax uh, uh, color coloration when you write program in some IDEs, formatting styles, the programming language you use, all these are taken into consideration in the coding guidelines. So there are a number of guidelines out there that can help you. So let's now focus on these four uh, source code verification criteria, the coding standards, the software metrics, default patterns and the runtime failures. So the first one, which is verification of the coding standards, your source code is verified to check if you adhere to rules. There are rules developers should adhere to. You don't just wake up and write a program or code any way you like it. There must be rules pertaining to the formatting style, pertaining to the structuredness, pertaining to the programming language that you apply for particular uh, requirements but pertaining to the constructs you use when you write your program modularity and so on so verification of coding standards checks your source code to make sure or to see if it adheres to these coding guidelines now coding guidelines can be platform specific meaning that there may be some guidelines that apply to some platform for instance, coding guidelines that apply to a web development platform may not apply to Windows or desktop development platform. Then we have industry domain specific standards. For instance, aviation industry or the field of avionics may have standards that doesn't apply to the field of manufacturing or to the field of uh, drugs or uh, pharmaceuticals. So different industries have different standards now there are standards that are organization specific for instance department of defense in the united states may have certain standards that are proprietary that they have to adhere to or maybe university of hazard may have certain standards they adhere to so these are uh, standards or categories of standards you know you should know so if you very if you are verifying coding standards, you also have to check which platform, which industry, or which organization. Now, over the years, 
uh, professionals have developed certain standards. For instance, I have listed five standards here. One of them is this is the SAT C. Sorry, let's go back. SAT C coding standards for the C programming language. We have the Mixra C, an improvement of the SAT C, but it applies to the Motor Industry Software Reliability Association. We have the High Integrity C++, the Mixra C++, and the US DOD and the JSF. C++. Maybe take some time to go online to read up uh, some of these ones you might be interested in. So let's now move to the next point, checking of software metrics. The first item, remember, is conformance to standards or in the industry. Now software metrics, you need to verify your code to make sure that certain metrics are optimal. Software metric is the standard measure of the extent to which the software possesses certain measurable property. Now let's take for instance we have complexity. If you write a certain code, it might be expected to be within a range of size. Maybe a, a code may be expected to be within a range, for example, 500 to 1000 lines. What if you write this code and it turns out to be 5,000 lines. It increases the complexity. Then we have maintainability. Can this code be maintained when you are not there? When it is put into operation and there are issues, can it be routinely or regularly maintained? How modular is, pro is the code? How reliable? How efficient? And so on. So all of this has to do with software metrics part of software code verification may have to do with checking the metric to make sure they are at optimal level remember the metrics are measurable so how that is the question how complex how much how efficient these questions are answered during software uh, checking of software metrics or verification of the software metrics now we have some other metrics that apply to object-oriented programming paradigm. Of course, you know this is the programming paradigm that is in use uh, uh, at this point for uh, in Java, in uh, C++, and many other uh, fourth generation and third generation languages. So some of the object-oriented programming language code metrics include uh, inheritance, number of levels of inheritance, and the classes within the codes, program code being verified. Then we have a uh, cohesion. Cohesion simply means how do the classes interact? Is object oriented, meaning that they have to interact. The classes or objects have to interact between themselves. Then we have coupling. How much method calls do you have from one class to another class? And of course complexity maybe you just take note of this let me take this pain take note of this term cyclomatic number it has to do with complexity so it is defined as maximum number of independent parts in the control flow graph of the program code all right so this is checking of code metrics all these metrics has to be checked in this uh, in this aspect the, the third item or the third criteria is checking of false patterns. The question is, what are false patterns? Okay, I think there is an error there. It's actually false patterns, not patterns. They are groupings of software errors, faults or weaknesses into categories. So just bear it in mind, soft, uh, false pattern is a grouping of software faults into different categories. So examples are memory related faults, patch resolution faults, and user interface errors. There are, there are many other uh, categories out there. Let me just take for example, the patch resolution. Somebody tries to assign an, uh, an object from the server and the object is not there. Maybe because the path specification is not correct, 
or maybe the object has moved from one directory to another that is going to lead to path resolution error so maybe you have to now uh, solve this problem by doing a mapping instead of using absolute path or maybe you use relative path to the location of the installation of the application all right so in checking of fault patterns we have oh why is this always going okay we have static analysis tools can also be used to check fault patterns a static analysis tool can be used to examine the, ch the source code to detect whether there are built-in errors or faults these are this can also be false errors not actually the the the, the, the fault from the coder but a built-in error out there some static analysis tools include find bug we also have the pmd Examples of fault patterns are this, bad practice, security, performance, correctness, malicious code, risky value, memory assays, resource management, and path resolution. I've mentioned this before now. All right, let's move on to the next one. Procedure for use of static tools for checking of fault patterns. We have three procedures. If you want to use static tools to check for for faults in the program, you, you first have to integrate this tool into the build process because you have to check for faults right from the initial time the program starts running. Then you configure the tools. You want to select certain attributes or properties you want to test, add custom filters or rules, and then allow the program to run and generate your results. And then you now uh, differentiate between a real result and a fake result. You know something like uh, the profile line in Microsoft SQL Server. You can set it to to actually examine the performance of your queries and give your results at the end. So these are the three procedures we want to use uh, static tools for checking fault patterns. All right, let's now look at the last one. The last criteria remember we've discussed how many we've discussed uh, three the first one is checking the guidelines the second one is checking fault patterns no, no the second one is is the first one is checking the guideline the second one is uh, metrics the third one is fault patterns and now we are going to see runtime failures what comes to mind when you hear of runtime? It means errors that actually occur at runtime. So how can you verify uh, errors that occur at runtime in design time without actually executing this code in the machine? First, you need to know some kind of errors that may occur at runtime. For instance, array index out of bound. We have division by zero, the null pointer, dead or reachable code, uh, illegal assignments and other ones so these are errors that you may not see at run time at uh, design time at design time the program may compile and uh, run but feeding in certain values may create runtime errors so you need to trap or uh, uh, find all these prob uh, problems in design time how do you do it before we do that let's look at this program oh sorry <laughs> okay so let me give you a few seconds to detect errors in this program. Okay, so what do you think? Where are the errors? You get it right? See here? I equals to zero, I less than five, J plus plus. What is the result of this? It results that this for loop will result to infinite loop is not going to end because you are not incrementing the loop variable let's look for another one uh, this possible division by zero when you do i minus one and then okay possibly uh, it might get to i minus one and gives us uh, zero now this loop is infinite loop meaning that this is not reachable because this loop is not going to break all right so this is it if you see any other error take note of it so 
these are actually runtime errors that has to be detected so the question is how then do you detect runtime errors when you are not running the program there are techniques one manual review sorry okay yeah okay basically you you use actually use a tool to run through the program to detect sometimes you also have to carefully examine the source code let's now look at techniques for code verification there are three of them I'm going to discuss briefly I tell you briefly because I'm running out of time manual review using checklists static analysis and dynamic analysis the first one manual review you make a checklist of the requirements a checklist of guidelines that you require the program to follow and then check each of these items does the code follow all expected coding rules are there some common errors in the code so you answer these questions in the checklist so this is manual review techniques you are doing it the good old way with a checklist static analysis remember static analysis have to do with examining the source code without actually running it on a real system now you do this to try to determine possible runtime errors you mentioned using of tools you also check for conformance to build in syntax rules of the language look for code metrics uh, issues and fault patterns in the code we have dynamic analysis after we have a static analysis and uh, manual method using checklists we have dynamic analysis using tools so these tools you feed your source code into the tool it runs through the source code using assumed values and gives you result so what happens it actually checks for potential errors uh, examine be the behavior of each variables and monitor the performance some of the dynamic tools that can be used include a VB watch for visual basic source codes we have the ion.js for javascript Chris, uh, a javascript code we have the purify is also a tool that uh, handles try to look at memory issues for instance uh, uh, overflow occurring in the variable assignment so these are basically the, the techniques used for software verification for code uh, verification all right a brief recap of what we've learned today one we've looked at what is code ver uh, verification checking of your source code for errors and conformance to guidelines and rules various criteria include coding standards uh, software metrics fault patterns and runtime failures we have three techniques we've discussed manual review we have the, the static analysis and then we have the dynamic analysis I'm going to stop here for now and I want to remind you subscribe if you have not subscribed thank you very much for viewing if you have questions leave it in the comment box and also if you have an assignment if you have a homework or question you want me to help leave it in the description box and be sure that my next presentation I'm going to uh, answer this question remember again to click on the subscribe button I'd like to thank you once again for watching